We are the nerds. We are the nerds of the apocalypse.
case he says, I know everything about Doctor Who, they are lying. Because there's, there's no possible way to do it. Well, I'm not going to argue that that's true. But, you know, there's always, there's always that one small argument. They know everything about Dr. Who. <laughs> Let's start with this. All right. Uh, first up, we have Dreamland and the Infinite Quest, which are two CGI animated Doctor Who things. <laughs> Mike and Jeff's going to turn them on and just turn off the moment. But yeah, they're really good to listen to. The voice acting is good. The animation is like the proto Pixar dancing baby dance quality. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really it cre it creepy to the point of being of being creepy. Uh, so much. And yeah, it's not 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 like Tim Burton creepy. Like uh, Less 
often want to follow a trail of clues across wild and wonderful alien worlds to find the location of the legendary lost spaceship Genesis. They soon discover that they are not alone in their quest. The evil, the evil Balthazar, which I'm pretty sure is a demon in Sapi, <laughs> and he's the big fat one in the tub. Oh, Moisturize me. Moisturize me. Balthazar. Charm. 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 Balthazar is charm. No, Balthazar is in charm. He's also in Buffy. There's also a character called Balthazar in uh, Supernatural. So. Hey, this is an old Bible name that sounds cool. If it's evil, it has to have Z in it according to the Z. Right, right. Evil King Alzoc. Yeah. Lord Alzoc. Balthazar is also searching for the ancient spaceship and wants to use his powers to destroy the temple of the galaxy, like you do. Will Doctor and Martha succeed in the infinite quest? Yes. No, they die. <laughs> <laughs> the end of Doctor Who. <laughs> so, some of the stuff, the, the other media Doctor Who, is very enjoyable. Those aren't. <laughs> you can watch them for completion's sake. <laughs> I think I tried about four times on that first one. Hang on. I didn't really like Doctor Who. <laughs> I need to get drawn and get a group of friends together. Okay, and then I can watch them. That <laughs> I but need to drink lots of caffeine and get a bunch of friends together and watch them. Yes, yes. Caffeine buzz is definitely the buzz you're going for. <laughs> Make a drinking game with caffeine buzz would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Shots of espresso. Doctor Who 
a this this is this is the only thing they put out that they have said no this is not canon this is a different story this is a different Doctor Who this is about an actual human man named Doctor Who like he's a doctor and his last name is Who uh, played by Peter Cushing A.K.A. Grandma Tarkin <laughs> yeah right <laughs> why not uh, for for those of you he's he's the the angry guy with the cheekbones in the first Star Wars movie. And, and in this one, he's the angry guy with the cheekbones that speaks a solid. Uh, I'm fairly certain that this VHS tape is the only way you can actually get a legal recording of Doctor Who and the Dalek. Um, occasionally, you'll see really cool poster designs of this. Like some Doctor Who posters you'll see will, will be Doctor Who and the Dalek. Sure, why not? Um, I want to get to that before I do this. This is, oh, uh, we'll get it. Peter Davidson is holding a gun for some reason. That's very out of Like, I mean, badly. But still, there you go. Peter Davidson is holding a gun. Uh, you will notice, though, that Earthshock is an episode name. Uh, there's a publication company called Target, not the chain store with the surprisingly cute clothes and the Christmas shoes. Uh, the publishing company called Target, and they wrote novelizations of all of the classic Doctor Who episodes. All, all of them, except for City of Death, which is actually coming out next year. So good for them finally finishing the job. Did you so much later? Um, so if you're missing a classic Who episode, if there's one that's been destroyed by by media or whatever. Uh, there are two ways to experience them. You can get one of the target novelizations, just these, or uh, they, the audio has survived. And for the episodes where the video has been destroyed, they, they will play the audio, and then they will have someone in the spaces between where the actors are, are moving around, they'll describe what's going on. It's, it's very similar to what they're doing now for uh, when you're watching movies, and if the descriptors are blunt. So the, the actors will still say their lines and stuff, but someone in between will say, this person's going over here, this person picks this up, uh, this person hides behind the couch. For a lot of the first Doctor stories that are lost, the voiceover is done by the guy who played the one of the first companions. So it's, it's really cool to hear his voice when he's really young, and then you hear it again, and he's narrating, and it's, it's basically like he is telling you a story. Uh, those are actually available on Audible, which is Amazon's audio website. Um, they're usually pretty cheap. It's really good. Uh, it's a nice way to be able to listen to Doctor Who when you're, you know, filing or, or driving or, or anything like that. And then these books. And I brought I brought one of David's because um, David David and Chris. These start this is the new Doctor Adventures or is that what they call eight. I think it's the, the Past Doctor Adventures is a book series. The Eighth Doctor Adventures is a book series, and the New Doctor Adventures is a book series. There are hundreds of those. No hyperbole. Sometimes you can get audiobooks. Sometimes they're abridged. Sometimes they're not. Uh, all of nine. He's only got six. But all of nine books are unabridged. And read by the lady who plays Jackie Tyler. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, David has several. Uh, most of them are a bridge. He still needs a story, though. And David himself reads a lot of them. So those are also available on Audible. I found like an Audible special one. Um, I like this one. This one is, is, is one of my favorites. Uh, it's easily the most savvy, but it's the Doctor who. Spot. But David and Chris's have this lovely little hexagonal symbol on the back, and if you line them up in order, it's actually a Gallifrey and numbering system. I think it's base seven, which is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we anything most people know. We use a base ten system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, ten and one, two, and three. But we use a base ten system. A single group of ten. This would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then what we would think of eight, they would think of as 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 17, it, it's stupid and mathy and dumb, and the fact that they did it means that Gallibrians make things difficult just because they make things difficult. <laughs> and the fact that they just said that was a sign of a uh, David and Chris both got these little sort of short hardback books. Uh, I think these are out in paperback as well. Mats are a little bit bigger and they don't have the numbering system, but halfway through the mat run, they started putting them out in these larger paperbacks. Uh, this one is called Plague the Cybermen. It's actually a very, very good story. This is, this is one of my favorite uh, books that, that Matt has. But Matt got these and Peter Capaldi is also coming out in, in, in books like these. Uh, Peter has six of them, I think, or, or nine. They come out in groups of three. Um, right. The War Doctor has a book. If you like John Richard Trailer, The Doctor, The War Doctor has a book called Years of War. Excellent. It's about the Doctor. It's about the time war and, and why he had to make the choice that, that he had to make. And so you've got the Doctor, you've got Angry Gallifrey, you've got Stalin, Guys, please. Everyone in here go to public school? Okay, we have a badass female companion. I'm, I'm parent, I guarantee you that's not the worst thing in school. She's just, she just kicks butt. But, excellent, excellent. Her name's Cinder. Scrappy, and I love her. What's that, eight? Yeah, these are the ones that came out when Dr. Wu was. On hiatus. On hiatus, it never stopped. Eight had a movie in, was it 94 or 96? 96. 96, something like that. The reboot did not happen until 2005. So in that entire 10 year period, pretty much all they put out was books and books and magazines. Comics. Mm -hmm. That sounds like pretty cool. Yep. But the Eighth Doctor actually has more stories than any of the Doctor because we have that 10 year period where he was the only doctor. So I think there are 80 some odd books in just the eight doctor. <coughs> There's a series of books that look pretty much exactly like that, but it says the past doctor adventures, and it's, uh, I think they focus more on five, six, and seven. That's one. Do we have one more? Oh, good, good. Proved me wrong. Half the board. The comics, like this is this is Doctor Who magazine. I'm not sure exactly when Doctor Who magazine started running, but they're still printed. This one is not one of the oldest. They just had their 150. Like, no, I'm sorry, it's not 400. 400? 500, I think. You can get it digitally on yeah. the iPad too. 500 and the magazine just came out. Like. This week, like Friday. Yeah. Um, this is the app, Doctor Who Magazine app. And if you have to pay for the subscription, so you don't have to wait for shipping. So you want to Yeah, I know. I was showing them where the best place is in the app. Um, you just download them. This one I was only partly downloaded before we left. So, but once it's downloaded, I'm not connected to the internet. So, but so you have you know 500 issues of the magazine that's got short stories, interviews, and comics in it. They have been pretty good about putting the comics out in book form now. So you, if you don't have Doctor Who magazine or don't want to subscribe to Doctor Who magazine, you can still read the comic stories. Um, you can tell it's from Doctor Who magazine and it's been printed by Panini Comics because it's going to be the only thing under the Panini Comics section in your local bookstore. That's pretty much all we import here from the UK. Other stories. We have yeah. always comics in the Doctor Who. Yeah, there's always comics in the Doctor Who magazine. Uh, there are also comics now being put out by the Blind Tiger. Oh, the Comic Comics. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. IDW had it. Marvel had it before that. And now it's Titan Comics. Uh, yeah, this is actually uh, Marvel up here in the corner. So Marvel's been around a while. Doctor Who's been around a while. Everybody loves comics. Uh, comics, books, audio. Do you have a comic book? Are we still on the topic? Did you cover that? I didn't cover this because I talked about Penny and Stuff. 
Right, that is the Titan Company. Currently, the ninth Doctor, the 10th Doctor, the 11th Doctor, and the 12th Doctor are having comic runs. And four. And four, sure. And the fourth Doctor. So, there's always going to be more Doctor Who. Uh, there are several mini series that come out, there's continuous series that come out, there's crossovers that happen, it's just like any comic, where the more you read, the more involved the story is going to be. This one was done for the 50th anniversary, each Doctor had an issue. And then the story is all connected. This is a came out before the quality came out. You can tell in this picture with all the tannies and all the doctors. That's the quality. Yeah. The, the guy that drew that last issue, Kelly H, he's like, I snuck him in there because they announced him, but he hasn't been in the company yet. That was, that was nice to see. Yeah, this is the thing they got on the. It's an individual story for each of the doctors, except at the end of each one, there's tannies. Vanishes and then they forget. And then he goes on and he starts remembering them with all the companions that didn't see them. And then it's fun. It's really fun. But it's really cool. cool. It's, it's good. It's good. And uh, at the end, all the quotes get together. Eleven. Yeah. Eleven or nine. And war. So it's done. Okay. There you go. Eleven or nine. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we just call it 8.5. Or some of the number. Uh, Audio. There are uh, several ways that Doctor Who adds audio. They have the, the episodes with the descriptors and the services them. They have original audio stories that are about an hour long, basically an episode. They have audio books of the novels that have been written. And there's a company called Big Finish that kicks eight times as much. They're really, really cool. This is a series that Big Finish did called Dark Eyes, uh, starring Paul McGann as the Eighth Doctor. Um, they have individual stories like this, but they also have a serial that comes out, uh, like once one month. They just hit their 200 and something episodes. Each CD is four episodes long. Uh, each episode is 30 minutes a piece, so you get two hours per season, which is about what you're going to get on CD. And it is full cast audio drama recording. So it's basically, yes. Yeah. Yeah, original cast. So whenever the Eighth Doctor has an audio drama, it's played by Paul McGann. Whenever it's the Fifth Doctor, it's, it's voiced by Peter Dickinson. Whenever it's the Sixth, it's voiced by Paul McGann. So they can get all of these classic Doctors doing new stories and classic Doctors, classic companions, but since they don't have to rely on the visual media, medium, not only can they do it way past you know what they used to look like in the 1960s and 1970s and 1980s, but whatever. Um, but they're also not constrained by budget, so you can have things that are much more intense, you can have, you know, superior boss fights, and it's, it's all put together by a guy named Nicholas Briggs, and Nicholas Briggs is known best to most people because he voices the Daleks, and the Cybermen, and the Ice Warriors, and the Cyber he's, the, he's the bad guy voice for that, pretty much all of them. But he's put Big Finish together. He's been producing these since 1999, something like that. Uh, Late 90s, early 2000s, something like that. And and there's a, an overarching consistency in in board production and, and plot. And there are there are audio only companions. One of our favorite companions is the lady named Ethan Hunt, and she is an older lady. She teaches history at a local college, and she just Talks to the TARDIS with, with the fifth doctor because she wants to see history. And she she always carries hot chocolate. Oh, okay. Cocoa, hot cocoa, mixed round in her handbag. <laughs> oh, would you like a cup of cocoa? She says she's not that sweet, she's pretty sarcastic. Well, well, she can't have any. <laughs> I'm going to drink it all. <laughs> she plays really well with Colin Baker. Colin Baker's audience stuff is amazing. Yeah. Mostly because you don't go blind while watching it. Those are technical issues, so it's Colin, Colin is really is voice acting. He's great as the doctor, but when it comes to the big finish stuff, and, and he's, he's actually able to act through them not trying to write bad stories for him and get him fired, which is why he can dress the way he was. But he's been a lot of drama previously. Uh, he's really, he's really DC. 
be right to stay together. It's not creepy. It's not D20 based, it's a D6 based. But there is a Doctor Who tabletop game. Um, each Doctor has a source book. So you can play just from the, the, the book, the original, or you can get a Doctor specific. And so you can play with all your companion character sheets. It's got rules on how to make time lords. It's got rules on, on you know, what your target map is going to look like if you get lost inside your own target. The Tina issue, the monster issue. Yep, the big one that talks about the monsters. This one that talks about Venus Alpha. Good stuff. The Birdie Here. Yeah. Um, 
question about the resurrection. Um, what was your first episode you ever saw? The first episode I ever saw was Rose. Oh, wow. Mine was Full um, Nuts Journey to Fast Dog. Oh, there's too many characters. Oh, but I've watched Torch with her. So oh, I wanted to see that because I wanted to see the Torch with characters. And then I went back. Yep. Yep. The old you know, Marvel used to publish it uh, for a long time, and then IDW picked it up, uh, and then uh, Titan Comics has it now. So yeah, Marvel was the original American publisher. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is April Yes. Yes. You can rearrange the letters in Doctor Who to make sure. Can you at least narrow it down from practice to Bluetooth? <laughs> <laughs> I think the episode 
episode that I go back and watch more than I go back and watch anything else is the Time Warrior, which is the first episode with Sarah Jane uh, as a third doctor. And it's basically the Samtar. And the Samtar is very confused when he sees Sarah Jane. He's like, what is this? Is this another species? And the, the big, angry, you know, medieval man is like, no, no, those are women. Oh, you have a two gendered species. It's very efficient. You should change it. <laughs> it's just, it's just silly. And then the doctor, you know, the guy is like squinting the whole time because he lost his glasses. And I'm like, I'm looking for a young girl. Oh, God, you still that sort of thing. <laughs> There's one scene that's one of my favorites, and it's all, it's one eighth of this past, and I can't remember the name yet. The, the mind robber? Mind of Evil? Yes, uh, uh, Mind of Evil. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, the Doctor and Joe, they think he's catching them, and then Max is in the... He comes in to go mock them, and Three and Joe are sitting across each other's table, and he goes to stop bragging, and Three goes... And he moves at checkers feet. Right, right. And then... And he's like... And then Master goes to brag again, and Joe goes... <laughs> and then she jumps over every single piece of three, takes them off, and then they just turn them over. Okay, we're done. In that same episode, uh, there's this, there's, there's this, this, they're in prison, and they're sucking the evil out of the brain of the patients, and storing it in this jar, and this jar breaks, and, you know, people go there, and just fuck you good enough. <laughs> and so the doctor's in there, and he's captured, and the master's in there, and you know, it's all just gone. It, it, it hits the fan. Everything hits the fan. And so the doctor's like, you need to, you need to let me free. You know, we need to, we need, we can only solve this together. So the master does. And, and so they go up to this device, and I'm like, hand me that file, would you? Oh, yes, cool. Can, can, you, can you solve this? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and they just immediately lab partners. <laughs> And you know, like you know from the history of Doctor Who that the Doctor and the Master went to school together, and so you know they're they're terrible, horrible enemies. And then you get them in front of science equipment, and they're like, oh yeah, can you please pass me that paper, please? Is, is that the same episode where Three is grinding the Uhuru wheel? No. And the guy he's chasing keeps looking over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another clip shows Three still chasing him, and he goes. It's the same double take. It, it's different takes. About seven different times. It's different takes. He's just doing the same thing over and over and over. Okay. Yes. There's one also called Oh My God, I can come on this on the same story. Oh, right, that they were sending out. Yes. But that one, you need to watch the other stuff from of Omega story or won't make any sense. Omega is a great recurring villain, which is why that is the villain that we chose to put in our Doctor Who fan series. Which we're premiering in three weeks? Which we're premiering in three weeks, yes. So with that will be keep an eye out on our Facebook page. We'll be posting a link on Doctor Who at both times. So if you want more Doctor Who media, <laughs> we're making some. Yeah, fan series, fan fiction. Fan series, fan fiction, fan art, fan comics, fan Yeah. 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 Person, I would not get along with her, but she's so abrasive. But I can really appreciate what she did for the doctor. Of course, the first episode you see her is the runaway bride, and it's immediately after Rose disappears, and the doctor's crying, and Donna shows up and slaps him. And that's good. It's like, no, let him grieve. So, the runaway bride, she was not my favorite character, but I really, really enjoyed her. But, well, right. Uh, that might be my favorite movie. Oh, <laughs> Everyone knows oh, Will. There's a guy that does the Dragon Con Parade every year. He's just gray in his beard and he wears a double antler. I know who I shot this Christmas. <laughs> okay, who is Derek? How would you feel if the doctor became female? 
I think the doctor has spent, you know, 2,000 some odd years in mail, and if you spend that much time identifying as male, you're not likely to change. Uh, I think if the doctor did regenerate in a female body, they would dress and act exactly the same. Like if the ninth doctor was female, they still would have worn combat boots and black jeans and a leather coat and a beanie. Like that's there, there, there's no there's no personality shift. I don't I don't think gender really has anything to do with with how the doctor would or, or would not react. I I don't personally think the doctor would regenerate into a female because I I think the doctor sees himself as male. But gender politics again is a big thing. So the master does it because what's the best way that you can manipulate someone and at that moment to be being female? Yeah. So she can. That's what she. She chooses, or he chooses to become female so that she can manipulate people as that is. Yeah. So we kept getting confused with master and mistress, so we ended up calling him the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, whatever. Now, are there rates for regeneration? I don't think. Oh, yeah. No, we, we need not. not white people to be Dr. Who, because I'm telling you, assorted entertainment crackers. <laughs> I think I saw on a box at the grocery store, and that's what made me think of Dr. Hubert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have met uh, doctors five, six, and seven. Uh, Amy Pond, Vincent Van Gogh, Mickey Smith, we just love her to death. Um, Sarah Smith, uh, yeah, Jack and Ian. And we're meeting Rory next week. And Alex? And maybe Alex Kingston. And the more of the force of character. Lynn's going to be there. And Lynn and Ishigo okay. and Owen. So I think that's it for doctors. I don't think any doctors are making this issue. So, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. And they signed the inside of a cottage. Yeah, you guys, well, the TARDIS is autographed. If y'all want to come by tomorrow, because the, the room closes at six and the panel's over. If y'all want to come by tomorrow, we'll show you the autographs that they sent on the inside. Vincent Van Gogh signs the bottle like a painting. <laughs> All right, yes. There are things that you write for drama, and then there are things that you write because your show is making a butt ton of money. <laughs> and so originally, yes, it was a it was one of those things of you know the doctors only got such and such left, and this is gallant for me politics. And then they he would regenerate. They pulled she, something out of somewhere, and now he can regenerate three times too. No, no, the time lord gave it to him because, because Clara asked nicely through the crack of time to me. <laughs> <laughs> I have very strong negative feelings about Steve Moffat, but again, <laughs> like oh, yeah. and a very small portion of Doctor Who. Yes, yes. So like, like I said, there's more Doctor Who that we like than Doctor Who that we don't like. But I will say, I used to do a panel called Steve Moffat. Don't you think he looks tired? Or <laughs> <laughs> We are looking forward to Chris Chibnall. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be very different, like even regardless of liking Stephen Moffat or not, it was time for yeah. him to leave. And um, Stephen probably has confirmed he is staying for the first season of Chibnall at least. Yeah. So we'll get to see Peter Capaldi written by someone else, and Chris Chibnall has a very different way of writing things. He's really good at character development, and he can pull a, a, a yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's, he's more subtle. And less. Hopefully he convoluted. Hopefully he doesn't get you. Can be, you can be well. complex without being convoluted. See, I'm not going to be told anymore. He's going to actually say and immediately bring it back. Unless they die happily of old age. Like, that's, that's, that's it. Or Connor Poison. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. kill one guy. Yeah. They kill one guy. And it's. Different panel, different panel, different panel. <laughs> Sorry. Not multi question. <laughs> Chris Chibnall, yeah. Chris Chibnall is, we have a Christmas special this year. Next year we will have a season and a Christmas special, and then Moth is done. Chris Chibnall will be writing after that. Peter Capaldi will have one season at least with him. 
Chris Chibnall is known for writing some episodes of Torchwood. He wrote the series Broadchurch. He wrote the series Being Human. And he wrote uh, the Matt Smith episodes uh, Cold Blood and the Hunger Games. That's David Tennant. He did, That's human, na- he did yeah. human Nature. He did That episode Human Nature was the dog who was human? No, no. Oh, what's that? No, that out? was a. Uh, no, the only David Tennant episode he did was. Um, Forty two. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Martha and her son that he took. I'm going to make sure I'm writing my Saying you're wrong, just so While she's looking that up, is that question? I guess I would probably have to say nine and ten, because that's the first one I ever experienced. Those are helpful now. Oh, okay. Well, okay, right, because I know that name. I keep thinking that this dick is somebody's name. <laughs> <laughs> like, hang on, I'm talking, give me that. Okay, so Paul Cornell, the guy that wrote Human Nature, also wrote. I thought you had a list. No, I'm saying I treated full Wikipedia page to find what else is about. Oh. Virgin New Adventures. Um, we've got some other books, that's what that is. I can see that right there. Virgin Publishing is the New Adventures. Scream the Shalka. Scream the Shalka. Okay. Scream the Shalka was another one of these anime things. So it was actually really good. Uh, it's good. Ish. Better than those. Not really saying much. Kick in the eyes there, so. but. Please don't kick anyone in the eye and say, at least you didn't have to watch that stupid Doctor Who cartoon. <laughs> Father's Day, Human Nature, Family Blood. Oh, okay, Father's Day. What an episode. Wow. But yeah, Scream of Shalka came out when uh, it was still before the reboot. I think that's, that's also an official name. Is it an official Yeah, he was, he, was nice, he was the ninth Doctor. But. David Tennant actually did a voice in that one. He was a security guard, yeah. something like that, because he was determined to do something with Dr. Who in it. And then they're like, hey, we're doing Big Finish audio. And he's like, I want to be a Big Finish audio. And so there's a, a, a Big Finish with the seventh Doctor and eighth, and they get sent to Colden, a Nazi prison, and David Tennant plays an angry German security guard. <laughs> It's terrible. It's so terrible. It's wonderful. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> what was the question on the summer? I don't know. Think about it. We're learning. Yeah. Yeah, interior. That is definitely David Tennant being a Nazi. That's the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> The movie did a really good job. Um, the movie, uh, that one was, that movie did more for character continuity than almost any other. Uh, Watch the movie. It's not good. It's enjoyable. It's 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 not as bad the as ma- people say it is. The master is terrible. Uh, the master is the is half human, which they had to throw out of canon about six or seven times now. I was like, no, he's not. Really, he's not. But he, at the beginning, it's the seventh doctor, and he's reading H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Ha 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 ha. That's not how that works. Uh, and, he, and he's drinking tea and, and listening to something on his old, his old grand phone, and then he goes outside and regenerates because he gets shot in a gang war. And he sets out the target because it's America. Oh, yeah. And that's the only, yeah. This movie was produced by Fox. But at the end of the movie, the Ace Doctor comes back in, picks back up his book, turns off the music where it was, and starts changing his feet. It's like, still thinking. <laughs> Murray Gold has written all of the music for Doctor Who since the, uh, since the reboot. So for 11 years now. He just the show? Just the show. Yes. <laughs> Well, she was other media, so Murray Gold is the only person in Doctor Who has never been voiced. 
Uh, I will, before I answer your question, I will say that when the Eleventh Doctor came on screen, you got that that song. That, it's called "I Am the Doctor" on the thing. Yeah, the, the you know Eleventh theme, basically. It was originally called "Every Star, Every Planet," which I think is a much better title, right? That's it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, yeah, so the reason Pluto's not a planet anymore is because Sailor Pluto is a time lady and the planet was her TARDIS and that discovered for her. <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo! laughs> yeah. So are uh, uh, Mrs. Grizzle and uh, Mary Poppins. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, do what? I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. Oh, it's time. Wait. What was that? Oh, yes, very old. Wait. I Am a Doctor is in 7 4 time, which for you music people know that that's just dumb and also awesome. But also, 7 plus 4 is 11. Yeah. And they, they announced Peter Capaldi as the 12th Doctor on uh, August 4th, which is the day before the 12th. So, yeah. Now, what is your question? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'll have in South Carolina. The majority of what we get is from you, Um Mostly because you can trade in your old stuff and get new stuff. And you're spending a little less money. Usually when you do a trading store like that, if you're using trade credit, they do not charge you tax because it's considered barter. So that's another you know, 10% of saving is what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I think most of it can be found on Amazon or eBay. eBay's pretty good. eBay's pretty good. If you buy videos on eBay, you might earn some dislikes. Uh, but for Amazon, at least, uh, you can just go through their used stuff, and most of it still is pretty efficient. But they keep dropping the price because they want to be the first person to sell it. And For the audio, there is a website called Humble Bundles, and anyone in here under 22 knows what that is, probably, uh, or old enough to have a credit card on the internet. Usually, Humble Bundle sells, they start with video games. A video game that you can run on a Steam account, anything you can run on a PC. You can say, we have these five video games. Donate whatever you can. We're going to send most of it to this charity, and you'll get all of them. Because it's digital. They don't have to actually produce them. Uh, if you donate more than ten dollars, you'll also get these five games. A lot of the big finished audio that we have, and some of the the characters that I've unlocked for Doctor Who Legacy have been humble bundles. That okay, you can donate however much you want, and we'll send you the dollar game five series for a download link. And so you can you can give them a penny. It's kind of a jerk thing to do, but you know, or you can give fifteen dollars and get you know all of the dollar game five series, half the Gallifrey series, and. Special. And so the torch was special. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, but you end up with all of that on, you know, you can put it on your iPod, you can listen to it while you're driving to work, you can listen to it while you're making 50 cents Pokemon hacks on the sewing machine. Okay. <laughs> That's what my last week was like. <laughs> uh, so I, for the audio, I would recommend the edit just humblebundle.com. Uh, of course, there are other ways to obtain books and movies and comics. <coughs> but I do think I just heard Nelson reference something that oh, okay. the I, I can't tell them the pirating software is thing. Do you know it's pirate? It is yes. definitely not it's it's available pirate. <laughs> if you pirate it and then you like it, it's pirate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me going to buy it anyway. But uh, uh, I will say that the BBC does not really push copyright law overseas because it's difficult. Uh, I will say that this time, uh, I'm going to be talking about the audio. Yes. Uh, have you ever heard of Ford Time Lord? Ford Time Lord? Ford? Like, as in Ford? Ford? No, as like in Ford. Like, like, as in, like, okay, oh. no. Yeah. Ford Time Lord? No, that's a question. Doctor Ricardo? Oh, I found that. I found it at the flick market. Okay. okay. It, it looks <laughs> like a blue one bill, but with like an old school hand. <laughs> that reminds me of what it's saying. And it's using, and it's using oh, sampling from the original stuff. 
And all it is is like the, the soundtrack of the car sure. and everything. Why not? And it's, 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 it's the And it's the only song that's on the screen. Like, okay. 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 All right, we have one minute left. One question. Who wants it? You got it. If I go in there and over, I'm still in there. Um, I did not think that I was going to like Mindy because Stephen Moffat has been trying to write that character for so long. He tried to do it with River Song. He tried to do it with Madison Barry. He tried to do it. There's like five or six women that Stephen Moffat have written that have been uh, older, major league. They have an updo. They have a severe attitude. They have a crush on the doctor. And it's the it's the same character. Even Irene Adler in Sherlock was the same character. He wrote her too. He's been trying to perfect this character, and he finally got it right with Mindy. And so I love Mindy, but I would have loved her more if I hadn't seen all of the proto movies. Like River Song as a concept, I love the, the idea of someone going backwards and forwards and, and that interlacing of, of time travel. That's amazing, and then it was just so shoddily. It was written bad. He did a bad job. That's not to say that it can't be enjoyable. He had some brilliant ideas and he executes them poorly. Yeah. And, and, and he can write a good episode. The episodes that he wrote for uh, Russell T. Davies on his Doctor Who in his first few weeks, he did. Um, Are You My Mummy? Like, that was his thing. He did that. But of course, you, you have that the episodes and every episode he writes has someone repeating something through the speaker screen. Are you my mommy? Are you my mommy? Are you my mommy? Don't blink. Don't, 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 don't even blink. Hey, who turned out the lights? Yeah. Prisoner Zero has the case. I mean, it's just <laughs> every case. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> you can always, yeah, right? You can always tell them off at episodes. You can always tell them. Repetition through the speaker screen. And no one actually dies. Yeah. Because and when the ninth doctor says justice once for us, everybody lives. It's impactful and it's meaningful. And then don't blink. You know the girl's friend dies, but she actually goes back in time and you know finds the love of her life and raises children to the past. And then in what the other one? Uh, yeah, Amy Pond. You know, oh oh no, the doctor's never going to see us again. We're going to go back to 1920 New York and grow old together and have children and live happily ever after. And, and just. Even the people in, in the library, everyone was saved. In the library, you know, that no one actually dies, and when they die, they come back to life. There's no, there's no emotion there. It's just the hood will break your heart. Some people cry. I'm like, oh, that's really sad. Wait a minute. They even, they even reference in universe Rory always coming back to life twice. One in a cat. Uh, the, the angel episode, Angel Takes Manhattan. So like, you can just come back to life. When you don't die. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in Vampire the Menace, when Rory's at his stag party, he's got a nine on the back of his shirt. That's how many times he dies in his course of the show and he comes back to life. But come on, man. I'm only in the next season. Still, nine times. That's like a quarter of the episode where Rory's in. And he does. So if you're gonna kill somebody, mean it. If anyone's writing, you don't need a happy ending to have a good story. Wow, I need to write that down. You don't need a happy ending to have a good story. You don't. You don't need everybody to fulfill their books to have a good story. You need to cause meaningful emotion and thought in your audience to have a story. Or make hard jokes. Those help you. <laughs> On that note. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we're out. We'll see you tomorrow. Come on, good luck.